name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Selected verses from Daniel chapter 6, the Old Testament appointed for Holy Saturday. The presidents and the satraps sought to find a ground for complaint against Daniel with regard to the kingdom, but they could find no ground for complaint or any fault, because he was faithful, and no error or fault was found in him. Then these men said, We shall not find any ground for complaint against this Daniel unless we find it in connection with the law of his God. Then these presidents and satraps came by agreement to the king and said to him, O King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the prefects and the satraps, the counselors and the governors are agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce an injunction that whoever makes petition to any god or man for thirty days, except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. When Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went to his house, where he had windows in his upper chamber open toward Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day, and prayed and gave thanks before his god, as he had done previously. Then these men came by agreement and found Daniel making petition and plea before his God. Then the king, when he heard these words, was much distressed and set his mind to deliver Daniel, and he labored till the sun went down to rescue him. And then the king commanded, and Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. The king declared to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve continually, deliver you. And a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lords, that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. No diversions were brought to him, and sleep fled from him. Then at break of day the king arose and went in haste to the den of lions, As he came near to the den where Daniel was, he cried out in a tone of anguish. The king declared to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths, and they have not harmed me, because I was found blameless before him. And also before you, O king, I have done no harm. Then the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den. Thus far the Old Testament. The Holy Gospel is written in the 27th chapter of St. Matthew, beginning with the 57th verse. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him, and Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. Next day... That is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how that impostor said, while he was still alive, after three days I will rise. Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people, He has risen from the dead, and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. Thus far the gospel of our Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Throughout the history of the world, we find God's enemies at work. And here on this Holy Saturday, we remember that their goal is to attack Christ. 
for it would so seem that they succeeded on Good Friday, as we celebrated yesterday, that they would have won. Christ was crucified. He was killed on the cross by the enemies of God. They also attacked God's word. For after all, Jesus said, after three days I will rise. The enemies of Christ remembered those words, and they brought them to Pilate with the intent of ensuring that nothing that God had promised could be fulfilled in regards to Christ and his resurrection. Therefore, they said, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people, he has risen from the dead, and the last fraud will be worse than the first. The enemies of God also attack God's people. All those who follow Christ and put their trust in the triune God, such as Daniel from the Old Testament, thrown into the lion's den purely because his co-workers were envious of his righteousness and the blessings that God had bestowed upon him. Satan works hard to attack you as well, and your faith and the source of your faith, God and his word. He does that oftentimes by providing idols as temptations that he places between you and God's word. Maybe sports, maybe sleep, and maybe your work. Anything that you might find to be more glorious than the cross of Christ. For God displays his grace and mercy, though hidden at that gory place of sorrow. Anything that Satan can get you to take the focus off, off of the cross and upon anything that might glorify yourself stands as a potential idol between you and God. Satan may change his tactics from time to time. For instance, a lot of those things that might tempt you to be your idol are not available to you during this time of isolation. But instead, Satan might use fear, creating fear through disease and the panic of the world. At other times, he uses persecution, as some have attacked the church quite intentionally during this time, and, and such as Daniel's co-workers attacked him in those days. Fear a great tool of Satan to get between you and God's word. But perhaps nothing was, was more worrisome than God's death itself. What does this mean? The people may have cried as Jesus hung, dying on the cross, after he was crucified and laid in that tomb. How can our Savior be dead? What does this mean for our faith? How wonderful Satan was working fear and worry and doubt into their lives at that time, perhaps in such a way that you and I could never imagine based upon the things we've experienced. And yet, God was faithful to his people, and God's faithful people continued to worship him He'd already come to them and blessed them greatly, instituting that sacrament of the altar for their strength and nourishment, preaching and teaching and showing that he had power over sin, death, and Satan. He'd blessed them, and they were responding with trust, even during this time of unknowns and uncertainty. And so Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus came, and they buried Jesus. And Daniel faced death by lion. God's faithful continued to worship him, and so can we. Contrary to that theology of glory that Satan would tempt you with and the idols that he places before you, we can keep the feast 
all your Easter feast, Holy Week celebrations may be very different this year because of the pestilence. And yet, still we can keep that feast tomorrow, every Sunday, trusting in God that he will save us through his word. Also, we can serve our neighbors in need, just as Joseph and Nicodemus buried Jesus in his time of need, despite the fear that it may have brought upon them the enemies ready to pounce and attack them, and perhaps kick them out of the synagogue. We can avoid the idols, avoid the fear, putting our trust in Jesus, having a firm faith in his promises, the promises that he continues to declare to you through his word, no matter what may stand in its way, that he will hear your prayers and that he will be there to answer you. One of the traditions of Holy Saturday of old was to hold vigil through the night, all through the night, praying until that Easter morning to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. Surely many of Jesus' disciples were praying, unable to sleep that night. Daniel, maybe not able to sleep with the lions there, praying God to save him from their mouths. Even Darius was praying and unable to eat that night. Vigil, prayer, fasting, neither commanded nor forbidden at any specific time, whether you do that tonight, throughout the season of Lent, as long as this pestilence may go on. Yet, in any case, pray unceasingly. Pray for God's word to go forth. Pray for the children of God to remain faithful to him. Pray for us to keep our focus on the cross of Christ, as sad and sorrowful as it may be, and know that tomorrow, resurrection is on the way. Holy Saturday was Jesus' Sabbath rest in the grave, but that breaks forth into your Sabbath rest, an eternal rest focused upon Christ, his salvation for you from sin, and resurrection to eternal life. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, creator of heaven and earth, grant that as the crucified body of your dear Son was laid in the tomb and rested on this holy Sabbath, so we may await with him the coming of the third day and rise with him to newness of life, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God, in this earthly life we endure sufferings and death before we enter into eternal glory. Grant us grace at all times to subject ourselves to your holy will and to continue steadfast in the true faith to the end of our lives, that we may know the peace and joy of the blessed hope of the resurrection of the dead and of the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Amen. Uh-huh.